Uh, what's up guys, we're out here with the Percept 97D. I got my Pure Aero 98 here also with some prototype strings I'm not allowed to talk about in case you're wondering why it's not my usual in there. And for the moment I'm set up with a lapel mic, so mm, audio quality not the best, but it'll allow me to talk while I'm hitting. And I got my coffee here. If you guys want to buy me coffee, there's a way to do that in my description. And I will shout you guys out in my next video. So, Slinger Bag, Pure Aero 98 right there, Percept 97. I'm gonna start off with some backhands. I've gotten a little acquainted with this racket, but I do notice the differences when I do this the most. So I'll record, we'll talk about it. All right, backhands. So I'll be talking, but not looking at the camera. And meanwhile, I'll be very insecure about people at my club watching me talk to myself with no understanding of why I am, but it's for you guys. So I have Wasabi X in the Yon X. This is an 18 by 20 if you didn't know. Uh, and it definitely has a lower launch angle than my 98, but honestly, not as bad as I thought. I don't mean bad, but I mean as low as I thought. This racket's heavy, but helps me realize how efficient your timing has to be, but also how relaxed you gotta be. You don't wanna muscle too much with a racket this heavy, especially, but ideally, ever. When I had this demo, it was strung with Hyper G. 16 gauge at like 53 pounds, which I think is just a nightmare for an 18 by 20. So I cut that out. After seeing if I like this racket at all, and I do, and put 17 gauge Wasabi X in here, which is one of my favorite all time strings, but yeah, these are, this is that launch angle. Gotta be more conscious of it. I'm gonna pick some of these up. Wait for them to go away so I can talk to myself again. <laughs> Sometimes the slinger bag gets a little bit, I wouldn't say jammed, but the balls sort of build up in a way where the machine won't drop and feed them anymore. So you got to give it a little shake or a little stir. It doesn't happen too often, I don't mind. As I was saying, Wasabi X, 17 gauge, 46 pounds, full bed. I usually only use Wasabi X as a cross string, but I did a full bed because I wanted to bring the swing weight down a little bit. Hyper G 16 gauge swing weight was like 333. Strung it up with this, it was like 328. If you guys haven't seen my video on Wasabi X or my other favorite strings of all time, you can check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description. But let's hit a few more of these. Yeah, these are nice. This racket's very stable, very solid. And I much prefer this one to the last one. And I've said that for all the Percept rackets, they all feel just the right bit stiffer. Maybe it's time for some forehands. So when I first got this racket, I played with it in stock form with Hyper G, but I decided I liked it enough to put a bit of my own stuff on here. So I'm currently hitting with it. A base grip of my choice, it's made by Turna. It's about as heavy as a leather base grip would be, but a little bit softer and maybe a little bit thicker, which I tend to like. So this set us a bit more headlight than it would be in stock form. Now it's really swinging the way that I want, but even stock, it was kind of agreeable. I think the static weight, the swing weight, string pattern, already say a lot about who this racket's for. More advanced player, I'd say at least 4.0 and up, because it's not easy to use and the ways in which it's rewarding may or may not be accessible to anybody but the more advanced players, to be honest. I think everybody appreciates a stable racket, but that usually comes with a pretty big weight penalty. And if you don't have the technique or the strength to handle that weight, it's just gonna work against you and not for you. So this truly might be the most advanced racket in the Percept lineup. Although the 100D and the 97H aren't too far off. One interesting thing about this racket is, I swear it has a higher launch angle than the 100D does. The 100D is an 18 by 19, slightly bigger head size. But that racket just really likes to hit a flat ball. 
it's also quite a bit stiffer. So you guys know how I feel about flex ratings. I would say that the flex rating, to describe the flex difference of this racket compared to the last generation, I'd say it's RA feels like three to five points higher, maybe more like two to four. That's gonna depend on who you ask. Going to my Pure Aero 98 now. This racket's swing weight is a little bit lower, but more so than that, I just noticed way more power. Definitely easier access to spin. I don't know if the sweet spot necessarily feels bigger on either racket. They're only an inch apart in head size, but Yonex famously has that isometric head shape. By the way, this is the last of the Percept rackets I have to try. So as of this video, I have tried all of them. And I actually remember very clearly how each one was. So my follow-up video to this will be a review of the entire Percept lineup. I hope to see you there. I'm going to do a few more with this racket because my last little round of them was atrocious. The swing path for both rackets is definitely a little different. Wow, that one's still over though. <laughs> there we go. Just got to hit through it a little more. Get that extension. There we go. Not bad. I will say the 98 seems like such a versatile racket. I mean, look at these drop shots. That's really quite good, especially without having warm that shot up too much. I mean, that was still really good, even though it wasn't perfect. Despite being somewhat of a spin monster with really good power, it has a really good control. Like its feedback is so intuitive. And as long as this racket is my reference racket, I will continue to reference it because it helps me put it into context, but it does for you as well. It's popular. A lot of people probably have hit with one or own one. All right, let's take things outside during a real hit. This is an edit of some point play I'm doing with a buddy of mine. He's a pretty solid 4-5 out here in California. And just before this hit, I was hitting with my Pure Aero VS, which has quite a bit lower of a swing weight. I also have some prototype strings in that racket that I can't really talk about. Just saying that to provide you some context so you understand what I was hitting with just before I jumped into these rallies. And some of these balls, I'm adjusting to the spin and the launch angle. They just went right into the net or sailed a little bit long because compensating for that low launch angle, sometimes you try to point up a little more, which isn't necessarily the wrong adjustment, but then it being a slightly less spin friendly racket doesn't necessarily pull the ball back down like I would expect. So there's that. And then the fact that it is unfortunate I sent the ball back that way. I was trying to be unexpecting. Anyway, it's that plus the heavy swing weight. It's not as easy to whip this racket around and get that spin. But again, a lot of things about this racket aren't exactly conducive to getting the most spin. The Pure Aero VS and the Pure Aero 98. More of my style of rackets. Definitely easier access to spin for all kinds of reasons. That being said though, as far as a relatively dense 18x20 goes, it's somewhat spin friendly. Honestly, I might compare it to something like the Gravity Pro. Possibly slightly better spin potential or easier spin potential than the Gravity Pro. If you guys really want me to do like a side-by-side -side comparison between the two rackets, I probably could. I think the swing weights are kind of similar and the intention of the rackets are kind of similar. So it would be possibly pretty interesting to do a side-by-side -side of these two rackets because they're both advanced rackets, 18 by 20s, and somewhat spin friendly for what they are. But rackets like the Shift Pro or the Head Speed Pro are definitely more spin friendly. 
The way you adjust to the racket, if you're coming from the type of rackets I'm hitting with, which are pretty spin friendly, somewhat powerful, you end up contacting the ball and hitting through the court a bit more. That's just how this racket needs you to play. I don't think it's a racket that's designed for that spinny, loopy ball play. I also am a little more understanding of the high swing weight in that regard because a racket like this with a string pattern like this, it should be designed to go through the ball a little bit better. That's how it has to be played. It almost wouldn't make sense if the swing weight were 10 units lower because that would immediately take away from how well the racket can play in the way it's designed to play. Does that make sense? So while if I reduced the swing weight somehow by 10 units, sure it would be more whippy. But is this the kind of racket that would benefit from being more whippy? You know what I mean? It just makes sense for it to be in that 330 territory. 328, as I said earlier, with wasabi and no dampener, but you put a dampener in there, you string it with something else, it could definitely be 330 or a little higher. All right, now we're watching a little footage of me hitting with another 18 by 20 racket. This footage won't last very long, but it's another 18 by 20, and I just wanted to grab it because it's also another Dense 1820, probably designed and marketed in a similar way to the 97D. And this is a racket that I've tried many times <laughs> to come back to and like, just because I want that dense string pattern. But going from that 97D to this racket, the 97D in stock form, much more stable and also better access to spin. It is a slightly more open pattern, a slightly bigger head size and a surprisingly noticeable difference in spin potential. So I actually really didn't love this racket during the hit. It felt like it had no punch, no juice, no spin and I'd have to put a lot of weight on this racket to get any of that. And even then, I still wouldn't be getting the spin. So what am I really getting? Not my style of racket, if I'm being honest, but I just wanted to like it because it has a lot of things I like, small grommets, parallel drilling, dense string pattern, but ultimately just doesn't quite work for the kind of tennis I want to play. And I don't think it really works for the kind of tennis most people want to play these days. So that's why it might not be a super popular racket, but it's also a dumb op, so kind of guaranteed to not be that popular. It's just not a name that's really hot these days. Yonex is, though. That being said, the Yonex 97D is also a racket that has small grommets and parallel drilling. So that's cool. You know I'm into that. It actually might be the only Percept with both of those. The 100D comes close, but I'll have to do a side-by-side -side later and I can mention this in my video doing the full lineup review, but I think the grommets are a little bit bigger on the 100D, but the 100D grommets are a little bit smaller than they are on the other ones, like the 97 and so on. So that's essentially all I have to say about the 97D for now. I will elaborate, but also have a much more simple and concise review so that I can get to all the rackets in the lineup review. So please stay tuned for that, subscribe so you don't miss it, and obviously it helps out the channel. And check out my links below to get discounts on some of my favorite products. My Amazon storefront has all kinds of things on there, from the camera gear I use, my favorite headphones, my barefoot shoes, things I use to modify my rackets, base grips, that kind of stuff. But I also have links to get you discounts on my favorite strings. Wasabi X is one of them, and that was in this video. It was also in the dumb up that you saw me hitting with. It's an amazing string. You guys gotta watch my video breaking down Wasabi X as well as Restring Zero and Toraline's Wasabi string, if you haven't seen it already. And if you wanna support the channel directly by getting a coffee for me, there's a link to do that below as well. So check it out. If you wanna help out the channel, there are various ways to do that in the description below. But your like and subscribe and comments are also awesome. So without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.